Hey everybody, this is Russ from Metro Game Core. Today we're going to be reviewing this handheld gaming device called the GPD WinMax 2. And you might be thinking to yourself, well Russ, you have obviously lost your marbles because that is a laptop, not a gaming handheld. And to that I would say, yeah, you're mostly right, but also a little bit wrong. Your first indication here is that the device has shoulder and trigger buttons, as you can see. And when you first open it up, it's going to look like a laptop too, until you look a little bit higher and see that it has analog sticks as well as a D-pad and face buttons. And so as you've probably figured it out, this WinMax 2 by GPD is a hybrid device. It's designed as a laptop, but also small enough to be used as a gaming device as well. And that's kind of what I want to focus on here in this video, because honestly, I have avoided reviewing this device for some time. And that's because for me, as a handheld gaming enthusiast, this laptop form factor just hasn't really appealed to me. And really, that's what I want to focus on here in this video, is to help you determine what type of portable PC gamer you are. Are you the kind of person who wants a computer that can do some gaming stuff? Or would you rather have a dedicated gaming handheld that can also do some computer stuff? And that's probably one of my favorite things about doing this review here, is that it helped me figure out what I preferred as well. And so in this review, we're not going to spend a lot of time talking about performance metrics and things like that, but really, whether or not the WinMax 2 is going to be a good fit for you. And so let's go ahead and get started. All right, I know we just said that I wasn't gonna focus on specs, but let's take a real quick look anyway. Now there are two different models of the WinMax 2. There's an Intel version as well as the AMD one. The one I'm testing has the AMD Ryzen 6800U, the same chipset we've seen in a number of different handheld PCs over the past few months. And so that's partially why I'm not gonna focus too much on performance because it's already been tested and tried on many other devices at this point. But there are some unique aspects. For example, by virtue of having a clamshell design, that means you can put a larger display display on here. And so as a result, we have a 10.1 inch 1600p resolution display, and it is stunning. A couple other nice things about the display is that it is a native landscape, and it also has very small bezels too. Additionally, this is the first GPD device to have Hall Sensor analog sticks, and they are Nintendo Switch style, so very close to the Ioneo Air models. Additionally, this one has a couple other bells and whistles, for example, dual M.2 slots for additional storage, as well as a whopping 67 watt hour battery. Additionally, this comes with a USB 4 port. In fact, here's a look at all of the different ports available on the device. And that's one of the nicer things about having this laptop form factor as well, is that you have all this space for different ports. For example, this one just has a straight up HDMI port, as well as SD card slots for both regular and micro SDs. And so while with many other handheld PCs you would have to dock it, for this one you don't really have to unless, for example, you wanted like an Ethernet port. Now the WinMax 2 was part of an Indiegogo campaign that ended last year, but it is still available to purchase through this website. And right now the cheapest model for the AMD version is a little bit over $1,000 altogether. And honestly, that's about the same rate as it will be for most of the other 6800U handheld PCs. Now the 6800U is designed to be a laptop CPU, and so because of that you can find laptops that have it. For example, the Lenovo ThinkBook 13S is one of the first devices that actually came with this chipset and has the same resolution but a little bit larger screen at 13.3 inches. And as you can see, it's about $50 cheaper than the WinMax 2, but obviously going to be quite a bit larger and doesn't have those built-in controls like that one. Now, another thing to to mention since we're on the topic of laptops is that you have a wide variety of choice when it comes to this form factor. And so while getting a laptop this small and having the built-in controls is kind of rare, if you're looking around the thousand dollar price point you can find some pretty decent laptops including those that have dedicated graphics card too. And so many of these at a similar price point are probably going to outperform the WinMax too. And so with that in mind, let's go ahead and take a look at the device itself and see whether or not those unique features are going to be enough to push you over the edge. To start, as I mentioned, yeah, this feels a lot like a laptop, just a little bit smaller, and it's quite a bit thicker than I was expecting as well. And as we mentioned in the intro, the first thing that caught my eye were these shoulder and trigger buttons. The shoulder buttons have a fairly shallow depth of travel, and they have a nice soft clickiness to them as well. They remind me a little bit of shoulder buttons on a Nintendo Switch controller. Similarly, these trigger buttons have the same kind of size to them, but a lot more travel by virtue of being analog inputs. And so like with other GPD products like the Win 4, this one is on a hinge, and so it has kind of a wide angle when it comes to pressing it down. Usually when you press on some larger triggers, it'll press the entire trigger down. It's not really that feel here, it's more like a pivot. Now honestly, that's not my favorite setup when it comes to a shoulder button like this. I like it when the entire thing goes down a little bit, but also at an angle. But of course, there were some pretty significant size constraints here, given the fact that it had to sit flush on a table as well. And so yes, these trigger buttons are definitely a compromise and not quite ideal, but they're going to work in a pinch. 
Okay, let's take a look at the rest of the top here. We have an exhaust vent here on the left, and then we have two USB-C ports. One is 3.2 Gen 2, the other one is USB 4. Next, we have an HDMI 2.1 port, then a USB-A port of 3.2 Gen 1, and then finally a headphone microphone jack. Now, additionally here on the top, we have two little magnetic sliders right here. These actually will cover up the controls if you like. And I'll show you what that looked like when we actually open up the device itself. In terms of fit and finish, this is an aluminum shell here and has that trademark GPD gray purple kind of hue. On the left side, we have an SD card and micro SD card slot, as well as a CMOS reset button here. Additionally, it has holes for one of the four different speakers that are found on this laptop. On the front, we have two more speaker holes as well as a power button with a fingerprint sensor. And finally, on the right, we have two more USB-A ports and speaker holes for that fourth speaker. Okay, looking at the bottom here, in addition to the four rubber feet, these two little access modules here are pretty interesting. The one on the left here is for an optional LTE module, and then the one on the right gives you access to an M.2 2230 slot. And so it's kind of neat to be able to add that module or upgrade your storage without having to actually open the entire device. Also on the bottom are two programmable function buttons and the intake vent for the fan. Now these function buttons are kind of interesting. They have a soft clickiness to them, much like the shoulder buttons. And for me, they're naturally placed between my middle and ring fingers. And so I have to be very deliberate if I actually want to press down on the button. I think that's a good thing when it comes to a function button like this. All right, let's go ahead and open up the lid and take a look inside. First thing you may be wondering is whether or not you can actually type on this keyboard. Additionally, I would say I have about medium sized hands and so just in general, it does feel fairly cramped to type on this. But I would say after a week or two of testing this here and there, I definitely got used to the overall size. I think when it comes to knocking out a few emails or maybe doing just a little bit of research, this will be just fine. But if I was to sit down and maybe try to type out a blog post or something else like that, I think it would be too cramped for me. For the most part, the function buttons are fine where they are. The only thing that I would change is I wish that the backspace key was a little bit wider. As it stands, having this at the size of the other keys means it's kind of harder to reach and is a little bit of a stretch with my pinky. One thing I do appreciate is the full function road. This comes in really handy with the hotkeys, but then also you can hit Alt 4 to close out of a program quickly. Now for me, it's a little bit odd to have a trackpad up top, but this one isn't terrible. This definitely has a hinge to it, so for example, it's easy to press down on it in the bottom, but not at the top. But it is also sensitive to tapping, so you don't have to actually physically push down on the button all the way, you can just tap on it if you need to click. And so now let's talk about some of the unique features of the WinMax 2, especially these built-in controls. We'll start over here with the face buttons on the right. Now these feel a lot like other GPD devices like the XP as well as the Win 4. They feel a lot like the PS Vita's button and have a soft clickiness to them. I think they feel great. And they're definitely small buttons, but I love how precise they are. And so I've never really had complaints about their smaller size. Going further in, we have the right analog stick. Now these are magnetic hall sensors, which means they're not gonna be prone to stick drift. And they're fairly recessed and relatively small. These are about the size of a Nintendo Switch Joy-Con, but they have a good amount of range to them. They also click down for L3 and R3, and I like the feel of the cap too. In fact, I think these are the same as they are on the iNeo Air. Looking at the left here, we have another analog stick on the outboard side. And then further in, we have the D-pad. Now we've seen this D-pad before on other GPD devices, and it is also very similar to the PS Vita's, but a little bit tighter and more precise. It also has a soft clickiness to it that is very satisfying. I'm a big fan of this D-pad as well. Now, like I mentioned earlier, we have two different magnetic coverings that we can add here to the front to cover up the controls. And so, for example, if you needed to bring your laptop to some sort of very important business meeting, you could cover up those controls and they wouldn't even know you're a gamer. Anyway, I think it's a nice thoughtful touch that they added that in the first place. It does give it a much sleeker design if you're not going to be playing games. But for me personally, there wasn't a moment when I didn't have these buttons exposed because for the most part, I use this for game testing. Regardless, it is a pretty nice touch to have that available. Now let's talk about what it's like to actually hold this device in the hands when you're playing a game. First impression to me is that it just feels a little bit imbalanced. And I think that has to do with the fact that neither the analog sticks nor the D-pad and face buttons are ergonomically aligned. As you can see on the leftmost side, we have an analog stick, but on the right side, the analog stick is not outboard and that just makes it kind of imbalanced. And we'll talk about this a little bit more when I actually start playing some games here in a minute. But long story short, this makes it so that some games feel nice and natural when others don't. Now actually gripping the GPD WinMax 2 is a little bit weird as well. It does take some getting used to. First and foremost, there are basically no ergonomics when it comes to gripping around your hand. 
In general, I would expect to rest your thumbs on the analog sticks and the buttons, and then your index fingers will rest on the shoulder and triggers accordingly. For your other three fingers, they're just going to be spread out across the back here, and it's a very flat experience. If you've ever used a clamshell device like a Nintendo 3DS or a DS or something else like that, you probably know what you're getting yourself into. The way I like to explain it is that it feels a little bit like playing on a grilled cheese sandwich. The only main difference here between the 3DS and the Winmax 2 is that it feels like a much larger sandwich. The other thing I found is that the meaty part of the palms near my thumbs here would actually press down on the keys while I was playing, but when you have it in gamepad mode like this, the computer seems to just ignore the key presses, and so I didn't have any problems in game. Okay, we'll do a quick look at the 10.1 inch screen right here. You can kind of see right here that the bezels are very faint, and I love the fact that they're so thin. We'll get a better look at this when we actually start playing some games. Now, size comparisons are a little bit tricky when it comes to a laptop like this, especially because I only own one other laptop right now. This here is a 14-inch MacBook Pro. This is what I do all my video editing on. And yeah, this is a sleek machine, but quite a bit more expensive than the Winmax 2. It's also a lot wider and thinner. And so as you can see here, I have a full keyboard. No issues here when it comes to typing on the keyboard here. But of course, this was designed with a different size in mind. A 14-inch laptop will make something like the GPD Winmax 2 look very small by comparison. And so yes, if I was to compare the one laptop I own against the other one, they are night and day. After all, the GPD WinMax 2 is quite a bit less wide, but then also shorter and thicker as a consequence. And so yes, the typing experience is way more cramped on this than on my MacBook, but all the same, it's much easier to port around the WinMax 2 than it is the MacBook as well. And so I think at this point, we're just kind of butting up against physics. I really don't have anything else to compare it to other than to say that yes, the WinMax 2 is quite small. And if you are looking for a more comfortable experience, you'll probably have to get something larger. And so here's a look at the device actually on my desk. And yeah, it is rather small, but honestly, the size is doable. When I was testing it, I kept feeling like a scientist out on a research project somewhere in the middle of nowhere. I kept imagining myself not having a lot of room to pack everything along with all my scientific instruments. And so in that case, the WinMax 2 fit. In particular, I think that if you're someone in the IT world that needs a work computer, but then also have something that's very small and portable, this might be a great fit. And then of course, you can relax and play some games in your downtime. Now, one thing that probably didn't come through in the earlier footage is that the keyboard itself is backlit and it looks very nice. And so if you do need to type in a darker environment, this is going to help out. Speaking of darker environments, let's take a look at the dynamic range of the brightness on the screen. Here we are at full brightness, but as I turn it down here, you can see it does get fairly dim. But if you turn off the lights, you can see here that it is still rather bright in a darker environment. And so if you need something super dim, this isn't going to work. But overall, I think the range is pretty good. Now let's do a quick sound test with those four speakers. Yeah, overall, I would say the sound is great here. I can't really tell that there are four speakers playing, but overall, it still sounds nice and clear. Okay, and so overall, looking at the color range here, I think the colors are nice and accurate and also well saturated. And so when it comes to gaming, I think it looks very good. Now, bear in mind, this is a 16 by 9 game playing on a 16 by 10 display. And so because of that, we do have some thin black bars at the top and the bottom. And so the bezels here are actually smaller than what you're seeing here on screen. And you'll see that with later footage as well. Now, as I started to play some games, I kept coming back to a few different fundamental things. Number one, it is a very flat experience just by virtue of having no ergonomic grips as it would with any other clamshell device. But then also the positioning of the analog sticks and D-pad and face buttons just overall just seems off to me. For example, playing with the left analog stick and the face buttons feels very balanced, but if I try to move over to the D-pad, I really don't like this feeling. I feel like my thumb has to stretch too far in to actually feel comfortable. And given the fact that I don't have to do that same stretching on the right side just feels a little bit weird. And a similar feeling happens when you play dual analog stick control games as well. In this scenario, the left side feels nice and balanced where the right side does not. And generally over the course of a week or so with testing, usually I can just kind of get over something like this and become accustomed to it. But the weird feeling of using the offset controls like this, I just couldn't shake it off. And so if I was king for a day, I would swap out the right side. I'd have the right analog stick outboard and then the face buttons inboard. Given the fact that we have a pretty hefty processor in this device, that means you're probably going to be using more 3D based games. And so because of that, you'll probably use the analog sticks more. And so I think that setup would work better for the Max 2 in particular. Now, if this was more focused on retro gaming, I would swap it out so that the D-pad and face buttons are outboard. 
But no matter what style you prefer, either retro game focused or with analog stick focused, you're going to be unsatisfied either way. And so when it comes down to it, the only games that actually feel very natural is when you use an analog stick on the left side and the face button on the right. And I would say among those three different control types we just talked about, that one's probably the rarest of them all. Another thing I found over time is that it was hard to find an ideal position to play the GPD Win Max. If I played games with the GPD sitting on my lap like this, it felt like the screen was just a little bit too small or far away. And bringing it up a little bit closer did feel like a better experience, but also the weight of the GPD Win 2 really started to come into play. This thing is over a thousand grams, it's about two and a quarter pounds altogether. And I would say after about 10 minutes of playing, I definitely felt that in my arms. Now I'd love to say that I'm super buff and it took me 20 or 30 minutes, but the reality is about 10 minutes was all that was comfortable for me. By contrast, it made the Steam Deck feel a lot lighter. This one's a little bit under a pound and a half, and yeah, much easier to hold up for longer periods. Not only that, the nice ergonomic grips on the Steam Deck make it more of a pleasure to hold in the first place. And so if I had to choose whether or not to play something like the Steam Deck or the GPD Win 4 in a couch-based setting, I would definitely prefer that over the Win Max 2. Now the Fox, who was kind enough to actually loan me this review unit, tipped me off to another position that actually works really well with this form factor. And that is to prop the device up on your chest while laying down. That way you can adjust the screen to whatever angle you would like. And I have to admit, this is a very comfortable experience. You no longer have to bear the weight of it directly in your arms. Instead, it just kind of rests on your chest. And so this, in fact, may be the most comfortable position to use the GPD WinMax 2. The other position that I used while playing was to rest it on a table so that way I didn't have to hold all that weight with my arms. But personally, I found this brings up some other issues. For example, when you're laying it flat like this, you have that really flat ergonomic feel. But I also found that holding it in this position while propping it up on a table was a little bit ironic. This is a comfortable position when it comes to not having to hold the weight in your arms, but all the same, this exacerbates the flat feeling of trying to play this device. In fact, there were many times when I was playing the device like this that I thought to myself, I'd rather just actually use a laptop, leave it resting on the table, and then grab a more ergonomic controller to use via Bluetooth. And so the ironic part here is that this has built-in controls, but in the most comfortable position other than laying down, you don't actually want to use them. You would rather just use a Bluetooth controller. And that's the exact same controller setup you would use if you were just using a regular laptop. And so essentially, this unique feature of having these built-in controls kind of gets nullified by the gaming experience overall. Okay, moving away from ergonomics, let's talk a little bit about performance. Again, I'm not going to focus on this overall, but I did want to mention by virtue of having that 6800U chipset inside, you are going to be able to play just about every other game under the sun. As with the other handheld devices, it's all going to come down to the balance between the power performance and the battery life. Now, luckily with a 67 watt hour battery, you don't have to worry about battery life as much. In fact, for most of my testing, I just left it at a higher wattage TDP, so that way I didn't have to run into performance issues at all. In fact, I would say that's one of the main advantages of the WinMax 2. You don't feel like you're tethered to the battery life on it. And so long story short here is that yes, the performance here is great, and I've demonstrated that on other devices using the 6800U chipset, and the battery life on this is phenomenal as well. Another point I want to bring, especially when it comes to emulation, is that navigating through the menus here is no problem whatsoever. On many other handheld PCs, it can be a pain to navigate through something as simple as an emulator's menu. But given the fact that we have a full keyboard as well as a trackpad to navigate through everything, there was never a moment here where I felt like I needed to use an external mouse or a keyboard like you will with most other handheld PCs. And so in that regard, when it comes to setup and usage, it is actually much easier than other devices. Only the GPD Win 4 comes close, but even that one is far behind this one when it comes to comfort of the user interface. Now, same thing here with emulation compared to PC gaming. This will be able to play just about everything. And again, it all comes down to power and performance and battery life. And I've talked about that ad nauseum with this chipset, and I don't want to inject more of that into this video here, but I will say that, yeah, this can emulate just about everything. But like with PC gaming, those ergonomics will come into play of whether or not you're going to have a good time. Okay, I think we did a pretty good job here of talking about what it's like to use the device. Now let's talk about what I like and what I don't like about the WinMax 2. To start, I really like the screen. The 10.1 inches 1600p display and a 16 by 10 aspect ratio means that it's one of the better gaming experiences you can find in a smaller form factor. It's going to work well with retro gaming in a 4 by 3 aspect ratio as well as modern games in a 16 by 10 or 16 by 9. Additionally, that high resolution gives you lots of options when it comes to upscaling as well as integer scaling. Overall, I think that the WinMax 2 was thoughtfully designed. Even the little things like the magnetic caps to cover up the controls are really kind of neat. 
And so I appreciate that a lot of care went into this design to make sure that it's a good fit for its target audience. I also think this device struck a good balance between work and play. After all, you have a full keyboard here and a trackpad in case you need to get work done. And there's even a webcam in case you need to jump into a quick video call. Additionally, we have a full suite of controls to be able to play most modern games and retro games directly on the device. And so if you have a need for a device that can be used for both work and play, and you don't want to bring anything else like a Bluetooth controller, this could work. I also like that there are lots of ports here, for example the HDMI out port as well as a full SD card slot. Most other handheld PCs are basically going to require you to use a hub or a dock in order to get the full usage out of it, and that's not really the case with the GPD WinRax 2. And finally, I love that big battery because it takes a bit of that anxiety away from playing on a handheld PC. Now I didn't do the whole gamut of battery testing with this device in particular because I've done it so many times with this chipset. And I also recently did it on the One X Player 2, which also has a 1600p resolution display as well as a 65 watt hour battery. And so when it comes down to it, the WinMax 2 will be very similar when it comes to battery performance as what you're seeing here with the One X Player 2. But I would also expect a little bit better battery life by virtue of having a 2 watt hour battery size difference. Either way, at the end of the day, I would expect to get an average of about 3 hours of battery life depending on what you're playing. It's going to dip down to 2 hours or less if you really push it to the max, and you can get upwards of 6 hours if you really kind of throttle it back as well. And bear in mind, this is in a gaming scenario. If you're not doing any gaming, like you're actually doing work on it, I would expect the battery to last a lot longer than this. Either way, all that is to say that the battery life on this is very good, and I appreciate that they have that large battery inside. Now, there are a few things I don't like about the WinMax 2, so let's go over those. Number one is the smallest joysticks. Now, I fully concede the fact that they didn't have a lot of space to work with by virtue of having a clamshell. But if you consider the fact that this is a large device from a handheld PC standard, the joysticks themselves feel uncharacteristically small given the size of the device. And I think we've talked about this to death, but the ergonomics on this device are also not the best. Number one, there are no grips of any kind, and so it is a very flat experience no matter what position you're holding it in. And depending on the position you're holding it in, it can be rather uncomfortable over time. And then additionally, among the whole ergonomics category here is the fact that I think the analog sticks are not balanced in place. I would rather that both of them be outboard just to give it a more balanced experience. And finally, the last thing that I just kept coming back to over the past week or two of testing is that this device is not ideal for either laptoping or gaming. When it comes down to it, yes, you can use this as a laptop. If you need to get some work stuff done, you can totally do it on the GPD WinMax 2. Additionally, if you want to do some gaming, say you're on a flight and you only have this available, then yes, you can play some games on it as well. But in either of those scenarios, I can easily think of other devices I would rather use. When it comes to using a laptop, obviously I would want something that's a little bit larger and more comfortable to use, even knowing full well that it'll take up a little bit more space in my backpack. Along those same lines, if it comes to handheld PC gaming, there are plenty of other options out there that are way more comfortable to use. And as I mentioned in some videos I released last week, you know, I think the GPD Win 4 is probably the best fit when it comes to that compromise. Not only is it very comfortable to use in a gaming position, but it does have that slide out keyboard as well as a mouse nub to get you along your way if you need to navigate Windows. And so to recap my experience here with the GPD WinMax 2, it was kind of fun to test this and it was neat to see what this different form factor could produce. At the end of the day, I learned that I am a handheld gamer through and through. When it comes to actually playing games portably, I would much rather play it on a handheld that feels comfortable to play. And for me personally, the presence of laptop characteristics like a keyboard and trackpad just aren't enough to win me over. And so whether or not the WinMax 2 is going to be a good fit is really going to depend upon you. Are you looking for a laptop and you also want it to be very portable? portable and you want to play your games without having to use a Bluetooth controller, then I think all those combined, then yeah, the WinMax 2 makes sense. But for everyone else, and myself included, I would rather keep these two worlds separate. And so let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm eager to hear whether or not you think the WinMax 2 is a good fit for you, or if you'd rather have a laptop and a gaming device itself. As always, thank you for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.